Hi, it's Robin. A little bit of MS-DOS fun today. I recently got this disc, Information Society Super Secret Coded Message, written by Kurt Valaquin of Information Society. Information Society is a band originally from Minneapolis in the late 80s, and I've actually covered them a few times before in videos because they've made a lot of interesting, nerdy stuff that's fun to explore. Previously, I looked at their track 300 BPS 8N1, which was a CD track that actually encoded a 300 BPS modem data stream when decoded was actually a text file, a kind of ridiculous story. And just recently in my Commodore CDTV video, I looked at their compact disc that had a graphic stream encoded in it, and I inflicted some terrible karaoke on you. I'm still sorry for that. But this is yet another artifact of theirs. It says here how to use this disk. Insert the disk into your IBM or IBM compatible personal computer's floppy drive. At the DOS prop, type the word INSOC and then press the enter key. Follow the instructions on the screen to experience a megabyte message from Information Society's musical database. If you need further assistance, then read the instructions below on the diskette sleeve or ask your favorite computer nerd expert for help. So the longer instructions here. If you know how to get an A or B DOS prompt on your computer, do so. If you don't, skip to instruction four. I think I do know how to do that. Type in SOC, give some instructions about bypassing autoexec.bad if you can't get to DOS. I guess some people had uh, menu systems. Now this should run on any MS DOS or compatible computer without affecting anything else thereon. Well, I do happen to have an MS-DOS compatible computer. It's my Commodore PC50-2 that I've shown a couple times before. It's got the original Commodore keyboard. Yeah, it's a little on the yellow side. But I recently took it apart, cleaned it up, and it works perfectly now. So it's still a pleasure to use. And I don't mind a bit of yellowing. All right, we'll put the floppy disk in drive A. By the way, this computer's from around 1989 or 1990. Some people think Commodore didn't get into making PC compatibles until right at the very end of their business life, around 92, 93, 94. But actually, they were making them even in the mid-80s. Uh, this is one of their later models, a 386SX, 16 megahertz. Still has the original hard drive in it, too. Okay, so let's change to the A drive. And, well, that's disappointing. <laughs> Retry. Oh, okay, well, this is going to be a short video if this doesn't work. Okay, I think I got another disk around here. Just make sure my drive is working here. 688 attack sub. Let's try that. Oh, this was just working a little while ago. Maybe the drive head got dirty. Um, where is that thing? All right, I've got a personal computer cleaning set, five and a quarter inch. All right, it's got this, this head cleaning disc. Some um, French instructions in there, which I'll ignore. So cloth looks kind of nasty. So we'll give this a try. Looks kind of like a regular floppy disk that has this big area on it here where you're supposed to put isopropyl alcohol. Yeah, let's put just a little on there. A little bit more. There we go. Yeah, put that in. Let's see if it spins okay. Yeah, I can see it spinning. And give it about 20 seconds of that. Yeah, let's try that attack sub disk again. Retry. 
Ah, still not working. Oh, let's try to boot from that. This is your 688 attack sub master disc one. You cannot boot your system on this disc. Press any key to boot to DOS. Okay, so now we're at the C prompt. Does this work? I switch to the A. Oh, yes. Come on. Good. Okay. Now the Momo Truth Sherpa, if this if this disc is rotten, that might be dirtying the heads. Um doesn't look bad. Seems to be spinning freely. Does have a hub. Okay, well, let's try it again. DIR, come on. Woo! <laughs> Good. Okay. <laughs> So we got three files here, insoc.c, insoc.object. Oh, so that's like C source code and insoc.exe. So that's the actual program. That's what we're really here for. Um, okay, you know, I'm not going to try and make a copy of this onto my hard drive. Just uh, making an insoc. Directory and I'm going to copy the A drive to. Oh, let's try that. Copy. There we go. I'm a bit rusty on my MS DOS. Hey, okay, all three files copied fine. And there they are on the hard drive. Actually, I think this is a really rare disc, so I'm going to make a copy to three and a half inch as well. Okay, so that's a blank disc. Go back to C, copy everything in that directory to the B drive. There, now it's archived safely forever on this kind of infallible media. Check the video description to a link to these files. I'll probably put them online, as I guess that'll improve the odds of it surviving a little bit better than only keeping it on these discs. Okay, I don't know if this disc is on its last legs or not, but I'm going to run off the hard drive for now. It probably does not make a difference. All right, so... Let's try it. Information Society, go ahead, press a key, any key. Infinite diversity and infinite combinations. In 1985, a minute independent label of Minneapolis released a single called Running by the band Information Society. Three boys, Paul Robb, Kurt Valquin, James Cassidy, and a girl, Amanda Kramer. You have been given this disc so that you may come to know the phenomenon that is information society. Simply follow the directions given on the screen to move from one page of information slash propaganda to the next. Do not attempt to enter the InSoc restricted files. We here at InSoc feel good about our music in today's world, and we want you to be well informed on the exciting things happening in the world of InSoc. Please avail yourself of this opportunity to tour our continuum. You'll be glad you did. Sincerely, Kurt Valquin. Okay, program by Kurt Valquin, exclusively for Information Society. For press and promo material, press P for biography of the band, B for biographies of each member, press M. For hard information such as catalog numbers, H. Okay, so it's the main menu. For a super secret coded message from Information Society, press C and to exit this program, press Control Q. Well, this is hard to chew. Okay, well, let's just look a little bit. P for Press, 1986, running generated reams of printed response. Here are a few samples. Impact Magazine from spring 1986. Their song reached the Billboard Dance Chart. 
1988, now after intensive creative reorganization period in 1987, Information Society is poised to repeat this performance, a whole order of magnitude stronger. Okay, so that What's On Your Mind song, that is their that is their biggest hit. Okay, so record reviews. I will not read it all for you. Biography of the band. For the past, press A. The band meets at Minneapolis 7-Eleven. Kurt had come in to buy a Velcro chess set. Paul, a book on infinity. Amanda, for Mary, Tyler Moore, bubblegum cards, and Jim, to find a genuine imitation kiss, guitar string. 7-Eleven had none of these items, but Paul saw an opportunity too good to pass up and claimed to have all these items at his house. He convinced the others to come and, finding nothing but a computer, a drum machine, keyboards, they accepted the situation. And Information Society was born. Information Society is kind of known for their ridiculous stories. Okay, return. Okay, let's let's get on to the, the main thing here. For a super secret coded message for Information Society, press C. Instructions for obtaining secret code and message. Follow these directions to derive the secret code number. All the information necessary can be found in other parts of this program. When you have the number, come back here, next screen, and enter it. The secret message will then be displayed. Oh, okay. So here, on a piece of paper, write down the numeric portion of the promo compact disc catalog number. Okay. <laughs> Divide that number by the highest billboard chart position. Round the number down. Divide the number. Press any key to see more instructions. Oh, I guess any key except space. <laughs> press C. Oh yeah, press the space bar to return to main menu. So press any key except space to see more instructions. Multiply by the number of weeks Amanda originally intended to play. Subtract 370. When you think you have the code number, enter it from here. Let's try to crack this. I haven't found any documentation of this online. Maybe we're the first to do this. Okay, so write down the numeric portion of the promo compact disc catalog number. That is probably under this hard information, yep, such as catalog numbers. Press H. And the compact disc number is 3143. Oh, I've got an idea how we're going to calculate this after, and it won't involve paper. Okay, so remember that. 3143. Next, divide that number by the highest billboard chart position reached by the running 12-inch single. Okay, so I think that was in that press release. Yeah, there it is. Billboard dance chart, summer 86, reaches number 10. So remember 10. Next, round the number down to the nearest hundred and add the number of songs on the album to it. I think there are 10 songs on this album, like most of that era. B for biography. B for present. No, I'm wrong. No, I thought I saw that somewhere. Okay, perspectives. Press C. Ooh, restricted information. No unauthorized access. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have to figure that out after two. Press P. M for more. M for more. Hard information. Oh, okay. Here. For soft information such as song titles, S. Okay, the number of songs on the album, software, what's on your mind? Yeah, okay, so there's 10 tracks on the album. So once again, remember 10. Next, divide by the number of acoustic instruments specifically listed that James has mastered, listed in the James section of this program. Okay, so it's biographies of each member. Press M. Choose one by pressing the first letter of each name, J for James. Uh, James has gained notoriety from his uncanny and suspicious ability to master virtually any acoustic instrument placed within his grasp, having mastered guitar, mandolin, blues harp, Jews harp, bass guitar, and a number of other arcane acoustic music generating devices. He felt that electronic music devices offered him a new and final frontier. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Well, is bass guitar really, a uh, an acoustic instrument. I guess it's a, not an electronic instrument. Okay, so probably five is the number of instruments. Maybe four, if that's a trick question. Multiply by the number of weeks Amanda originally intended to play with Information Society. Okay, biographies Amanda. Uh, do, do, do. 
Agreeing to join Insock for a six-week tour, she moved to the Big Prairie in late 1985. Okay, uh, so six-week tour. So remember six. And then we have to subtract 370. Okay, so to X this program, Control-Q. So instead of using paper, I'm going to go into here and into C64S. Are you ready? And here's the C64S emulator for DOS. This is, well, I think this is the second C64 emulator I ever used. I used one on my Amiga first, which was terribly slow. And I'm not sure this one's really any better. Oh, oh look how slow that cursor's flashing. Okay, maybe this is going to be too painful, but let's change the cursor to white. Better contrast. Okay, let's try and do this. Print three one four three divided by ten. I type too fast, it's really easy to get ahead of it. Okay, so three one four three divided by ten is three hundred fourteen point three, and then round that down to the nearest one hundred. So that's three hundred. 300 plus, this has got a positional keyboard map, so you don't press the shift plus on the PC keyboard, you press the minus key to get plus. Add the number of songs on the new album, which is 10. So now we're at 310. Now we're supposed to divide that. 310 divided by the number of instruments that James has mastered is five. We get 62. Multiply that 62 by, well, where's multiply? There it is. Good. Ooh, we got right. It's the uh, right square bracket. Number of weeks she was supposed to be there is six. 372. And now, 372, we have to subtract 372. Well, I could do that in my head, but anyway, we might as well finish it here. 370. Oh, so slow. Two. <laughs> the answer is two. Okay, how do we get out of here? 10. Control, escape, F9 to, no, that brought up that, H for help. I can't remember how to get out of here. Oh, control break to get out. Control, well, okay, from the main prompt maybe. Ah, DOS again. Okay, back to that insock. We got our answer of two. For a super secret coded message from inside. Yeah, right. Press C. Press any key. When you think you have the code number, enter it from here. Two. It's a great big disco world. <laughs> well, I guess that's it. <laughs> um, okay, well, I'm not sure that was worth it, but press the key to continue. Well, what happened? Okay, so C, it's just a single number. Press When you think you have the code number, yeah, let's hit one. Wrong. Code three wrong. Oh, so we probably could have just typed in code. Yeah, so like it's just a single digit. I guess it's pretty easy to guess that. Code two. It's a great big disco world. 
Okay. Okay, but there is still that one other screen here for um, Biography of the Band, B. For Information Society's Perspectives, press C. Restricted Information, no unauthorized access. C. C. Okay, so I wonder if there's something else in there. So there's the, the thing that we haven't looked at yet is this insoc.c. So if we just edit insoc.c, yeah, so it's actually all the source code of this. Include con IO graphs, standard input output, function prototypes, a whole bunch of void functions. Past present. So this is just I guess all the different screens, the user input variable. Okay, and here's the main function, draws the logo, gets the key. If selection is not 17, I think that's that control Q, isn't it? Okay, so I looked up and yes, control Q is character 17 so this is just checking for quitting okay and here's his user function that clears the screen oh yeah here's the main menu and then he's just checking is it code p b that's the main menu c again if selection is 17 that's the quit control q go to user so he's <laughs> So normally C doesn't have a bunch of go-tos like this, but uh, whatever. Maybe Kurt was a basic programmer and he learned C so he could write a little DOS program here. Clear screen. Okay, so here's the code. Uh, basically, I'm just looking through here. Oh, oh, oh. Random crisis backdoor perspectives. Oh, control Q. They go to perspectives. So that's what we're looking for perspectives. Membio. We might as well just keep going through here. Yell loud if I'm missing anything interesting. I think basically we want to find that perspective screen and see if there's some way uh, through that. Well, might as well look at all the code here. There's a whole lot of prints. Restricted information, no unauthorized access. Oh, here's this is what we're looking for. Oh, selection 18. Control R is the back door. Okay, that looks like that's the actual code. Okay, I don't want to spoil it all. There, we looked through the whole program. I think Control R. Will get us in. So biographies of the band B, information society's perspectives C, restricted animation. Okay, so R. Ooh, 187 sector OE, some random numbers. Enter code or exit. Code 2. Uh, control R. Oh, oh, I guess it worked. In sock plan for world domination. As of February 88, four of the six major economic cultural vectors have had significant inroads made upon them. Although no vector is complete, three are likely to align, align themselves in a way favorable to our intentions through current inertia alone, international trade definition, and space exploration have yet to be positively influenced. The following is needed. 
further influence upon Western ideological climate through popular music. See Principle 7, Information Society Broadcast Music Effective Range, Greater Trap Vectoring for Television Propaganda Content, Continued Proliferation of Information Society Media Output, Considering Developing Our Own Independent Space Program. These considerations, coupled with the strengthening of our ideological influence through Information Society and the M3 Radex, should bring us within visible reach of world domination by 2030. Well, hey, that's only eight years away now. I think this was written in 1988. I keep uh, forgetting when we're back in DOS to point out. Okay, so that's <laughs> so that's the Information Society plan for world domination. We found it. We cracked it. By 2030, I welcome their world domination. So here, let's. Oh, even Control Q gets you out. Okay, well, there we are again. Text in this program. Okay, I keep meaning to look at that. These files were updated, compiled July 13th of 1988. Predates this computer by probably a year, maybe two at the very most. So that's the Information Society Super Secret Coded Message. Very unique kind of band merchandise or marketing tool or whatever you want to call it. And they accidentally included their world domination plans on there. Oops. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. Kurt, if you're watching, I really appreciate all these funny little things you did back in the 80s and 90s for your music. And I'm glad they're still around to enjoy. Thanks to my patrons for their support. Thank you for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.